This is the old Doctor Who show, episode number 106, War Games, part two, part two. Go forward in all your oh. beliefs and prove to me that I am not mistaken in mine. <laughs> I couldn't control my mind before, and you certainly can't control it now! Would you like a jelly, baby? The TARDIS, when working properly, is capable of many amazing things. Because the polarity of the neutron flow is that the TARDIS should be free of the force field. Well, the TARDIS is more than a machine. It's unity. It's like a person, you see? The resulting reaction is fighting. Are you ready? Oh my god, I forgot what we were Welcome doing. Welcome back to the uh, old Doctor Who show, your classic... Tri weekly Doctor Who review podcast. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Dan. And yeah, and I am for a special oh. occasion this time is uh, my co host. Who is this guy? Uh, it's me, Eric. And I, oh, it's am, the same guy as always. Yeah, That's usually uh, the uh, opening is me saying what Dan just said, and I'm yep. not joking. We did our little clap, and my brain just went <laughs> snapped. There's nothing left. Uh, nope. <laughs> the I think I, I used all of my resources uh, for the Civil War. So I yeah. just, you know, I was like, hey, uh, the new one. The new the, one. Nothing, not the, it's, the class, reboot. it's like new Coke. It's like new Coke instead of old Coke. It actually is kind of like, uh, like if you had like people are like, hey, the Civil War is pretty good. What if we rebooted it, but dumber? Yeah. And then Much that's, dumber. That's, yeah, it, it, it almost like it's the Civil War, but gone through a committee where people are like, well, maybe if we had more Vikings and like you could have like a little right, right. Uh, little things. How are you, Dan? How are you surviving? Every day is is a gift. Every <laughs> each day is a gift. Where were you on one six, Eric? That's what I want to know. I uh, was on the steps of the Capitol. <laughs> uh, I minded my, my own uh, business. <laughs> yeah, I, I had my um, uh, road warrior style headdress and feathers and which is what you normally wear on a wednesday so this wasn't yeah, i was there anyway uh for yeah. my skyrim uh <laughs> skyrim group was meeting you were larping skyrim what a dumb yeah. world it's this scary and dumb scary yeah, and right. dumb uh it'd be fine together. if it was if it was dumb and funny and not scary but it's uh um, yeah. or or scary and very serious because then you don't have to you know, switch the the tone. You can just be petrified all the time, but it's also that, just dumb, funny, and terrifying at the right. It's, and that that's why great. I think we, we it is it is a simulation. Like this is all a simulation. Of course, uh, it's it kind is. of a weird thing that they decided to run a simulation and were like, and then these two guys will have a Doctor Who podcast to listen to, <laughs> and we got roped into that thing. But it's like oh, we're, okay, it's a bad subroutine. Someone <laughs> it was a. Like, keystroke that you know it's just right it wasn't they're like ba- it's like someone's writing this code this little simulation code and they don't know they're like they can't get the tone right they can't figure out if it's like really dark and scary or absurd oh. absurdist humor like they're bouncing back and forth uh between dudes that would face paint themselves and other guys in paramilitary gear with zip tie handcuffs like they're not right. sure like which direction uh, are we supposed to go in? But let's not go in that direction, Dan. Let's go in the direction, direction about let's... another kind of war game. Eric, I want to talk to you about uh, something really important. It's called <laughs> Q. Have you heard of Q? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, Lord. I mean, I, one thing One thing that's interesting mm. to me... I'm sorry, we will get off. This is not a, the topic for the show. This is not This is not what we're here to no. talk about. But, but I, hey, it's on I our do, minds. It's, it, it can't not be. We have um, lots of listeners from outside... What was formerly known as the United States of America. So I just wonder, like, I know you guys have a lot in your plates too. Uh, the UK, there's a lot going on there. Uh, our New Zealand and Australian listeners, bully for you guys. Uh, I know you have a lot of, you know, there's there's environmental catastrophe to worry about, but you have like seemingly stable democracies, which is pretty cool. I don't know how you did it. Um, so I'd like to chat if we guys could just have a roundtable at some point and maybe. Yeah, yeah, figure what, out best practices. That's right. That's where I'm at. Oh man, uh, but Dan, we're here to talk about another type of war game, war. Um, yeah. not the one we're living through, but the one that involves um, <laughs> a doctor. The doctor. Should we just jump into it? Do we want to talk about the Powerball? I mean, I don't know. What What are we? Oh what, man, what are we doing? So I did not win, qu- so I didn't. Qu- win, I didn't win <laughs> so we wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. A quote that uh, runs through my head all the time is. Um, uh, the lottery is a tax on people who are bad at math, mm. and yet my uh, quarantine friend group text chain 
uh, <laughs> keeps buying into it every every day that we don't win. So we keep having to send each other money so that we can continue to donate to charity, which is right. how I like to think about it. We're donating to seniors and schools. Um, yeah, that works. Cool. That works. Right? It makes me feel a little bit better about the stupid amount of money I'm wasting on this, but uh, it's fine. You got to be in it to win it, Eric. You do. Just you got to like, be in it to win it. And speaking just, of being in it, let's, let's jump get in into it, it uh, because we're going to win it. So hit that uh, button, Dan, and take us into the future and the past of the world of Doctor Who War Games. General Sideburns. That's a Ben Folds 5 song, isn't it? Is it? This is the war chief to all war zones. This is a command direct from the warlord. All fighting will cease. I repeat, all fighting in the war zones will cease. You will stand by for further orders. What did he mean, Doctor? Who mustn't you call? The only people who can put an end to this whole ghastly business and send everyone back to their own times. The Time Lords. Well, who are they? They're my own people, Jamie. Oh, well, that's all right, then. But it isn't all right, is it, Doctor? No, it's not, Zoe. But I'm afraid there's no alternative. This is War Games, Dan. This is the second part Ooh. of uh, of a ten-part show. We had already done parts well, one through five. We had done so not a lot to change. One, though, I don't think we need to do a description. It's written by Terrence Dix, Malcolm right. Hulk, directed by David Maloney. It's from 1969. Where In we War left Games off, two, I think, though, like Ali Sheedy and Matthew Broderick don't return. And <laughs> no, they don't. The return. They could it's not get video. Them. Yeah, they had to get yeah. Jason Bateman. Uh, in one of his first <laughs> roles, uh, because he, uh, Ricky Schroeder, uh, had you know issues because Jason Bateman was you know much funnier than he was, uh, right. so he had him kicked also... off the show, and then he had to go on to War Games Part Two. That's right. He, did yeah. you know that he actually uh, the that character Jason Bateman's character had a spinoff show that lasted a couple? Oh, of Oh, and I love that show. It was called It's Your Move. Yes, uh, with Jason go. Bateman, and it was him and the guy that was also in Married with Children that was married to Marcy, whose name I can't remember. And I oh, believe he right. was dating Jason Bateman's mom. Was that the whole premise? I don't recall the show. I think actually. she was a single. Spoons, if I'm remembering correctly, uh, and of course you are. His mom you was a single fiction. mother, and then there was Jason Bateman, <laughs> the uh, wisecracking, uh, adorable little scamp. Scamp. And then she's scamp. dating the guy from Married with Children, and at one point they move a couch. Now I don't remember if the whole episode was about moving a couch or if that every was just episode, in the title sequence. I think that was their gimmick. In every episode, they would move the couch. <laughs> they had to move furniture, <laughs> that's, that's and it was like. They, they would one would hold one end and one would hold the other and they go, it's your move. And they would both say and it and right. they wouldn't That's go anywhere. Thing. Yeah, they were waiting good. for one, one of them to go first. Uh, yeah. So anyway, this is Jamie does not get killed. Uh, we find out about the Time Lords. There's a oh. war lord and a war chief. Will get confusing. I guarantee I will make the mistake when I'm trying to talk about the war chief. I'll say the war lord or vice versa. We get to meet the Time Lords. A lot happens in the back half of this 10-parter, but we already sort of went over the overall story yeah. synopsis, so we're just going to skip it, Dan. We're going to jump right to you. How do you think the back half did compared to uh, the first half? And for listeners that may have not heard part one, you could uh, listen to it again, or you can. I can tell you Dan did like the first five parts. Um. And Eric, I believe, didn't like it as much as hey, no, I, it was okay. That far yeah, back I felt time. it's a little long, uh, but we will get into that, yeah. I guess. So, um, yeah, what did you think, <clears throat> Eric? I'm glad yeah. you asked. I'm, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> uh, for once, my opinion on this show. Uh, I like this a lot, um, but I particularly liked, of course, the last two episodes. Uh, mm -hmm. That is the stuff that's right up my alley. The, I had I knew that there was a lot of canon that was going to be established in this part of the story, but I didn't realize the how much and what specifically. So that was a lot of fun to see how things connect. Um, the first you know three episodes were good because you're you're it, it's all in the for the most part all in the War Games HQ inside. Um, so you, you you have the back and forth between the Warlord and the Security Chief and. Uh, the war chief and it, it's a really <laughs> maybe it's just me like queering the narrative but it's just a really bitchy threesome 
of uh, yeah. uh, unhappy gay men just bickering at each other the entire time. But yeah, that just might be my lens that I'm viewing this through. Um, <laughs> just, just lots of sassy put downs. <laughs> just meow the entire time. Um, uh, but but I but I enjoy it, and it's just honestly, I can't get enough. <laughs> I can't get enough of the guards in black pleather with the, the the mask. Like I can't get enough of them running around. It makes me think of Venture Brothers. Um, some of the uh, uh, just the the goons in the show, like the the I don't know. I they just seem so comical, but it looks so good as well. The whole the whole production design. I think I mentioned this in the last in the last uh, review. Uh, the sort of, you know, it's the 60s, you know, the prisoner uh, TV show sort of vibes coming in, and we're just setting that the whole time. Pretty cool. Overall, though, um, just as a high level, I liked it. I'm glad they got through a lot of the narrative stuff to wrap up the main story so they can get into uh, ending uh, Troughton's uh, tenure as the Doctor and uh, resolve the storylines with Zoe and Jamie. We can talk about how we feel about that. But Eric, at a high level... What did you think of the last five episodes at a, of the story? Yeah, at a high level. <clears throat> I mean, um, like, get real high. When real I, yeah, real. exactly. Hold on. I'm back. Uh, yeah. Okay. I like this. I like the back five more than I like the front five. Because Agreed. for all the reasons that you talked about. All of the way that they present the Time Lords, I like them very mysterious you don't really mm. and I, we, we can talk about context like this is the first time anyone's ever seeing the time lord i'm not sure if this is the first time first time they're named time lord probably i think because so. um, you, you sort of know the doctor is not human but you don't know anything about his people and so you mm-hmm. the way they're presented and how much fear the doctor has of them and how much fear the war chief has of them it really sets them up Mm-hmm. Really nicely, and I liked all of their interactions. I still <clears throat> felt that it was over long. You know, there were parts of this five-parter that I think you definitely could have cut out. But yep. overall, I liked it. I especially like all of the infighting you talked about with the security chief. That mm-hmm. you know, and and the, it's it makes sense in 1969 in England for there to be a lot of like. Nazi stuff. I mean, we're not far off at all from World War II, but right. I do like that sort of villain, fascist, Nazi thing of like the um, security uh, chief, right? What's his yeah. name? Security chief? Let's yeah. call him security, security chief. chief. There's war chiefs, so. security, whatever, inspector, general. Of security security. Bob. I liked his character a lot. He definitely felt like that kind of Nazi doctor security weirdo he had a lot of davros qualities before we get to see davros much later um it's not the same actor but just in the way that it's delivered and like i liked how he was fighting with the war chief and how that sort of back and forth like competing for the love of the of the warlord i like the warlord a lot too i especially liked the warlord throwing everything back in the face of the time lords at the end when he's like you know, I, you did all these crimes. You took these people out of time. You forced them to fight each other. And he's like, yeah, they would have killed each other anyway. Which is, you know, he's got a point. And the fact that he says, you're, you're, you know, you're no worse than I am. And he sort of does that whole thing. I like that. Jamie, I thought, was great. Zoe was pretty good. But I, I felt like there wasn't a ton of, like, great Zoe moments or Zoe scenes. And I feel like that actually... Even the first five parts, there wasn't, there doesn't seem to be a lot with her. Troughton, we'll get into. I'm not a huge Troughton fan, and I feel like he just always feels, and I know this is sacrilege, and we're going to be dropping fans of the show based on this, but I just feel like he's always whining. Oh no! And like he's too frantic and whining all the time, and if anything goes wrong, he just starts whining. Oh no! And it, it fills me with anxiety, like, watching him operate. I feel, like, mm. just anxious all the time because he's so sort of high-strung, you know? But it was fine. I mean, I liked yeah. it. And I liked I did like it a lot more than the first five parts. Not that there was anything wrong with the first five parts, but that all of this, once we sort of established what the rules were and what they were doing, I liked all of the intrigue between the two groups and, yeah. you know, Ray weird mexican 
uh, caricatures and stuff aside, that that That's whole strange. thing was a little a little um, weird, uh, it's but it was good. Oh, and there was a lot more stock footage of uh, alligators and close-ups of teeth. Like I like that the TARDIS is just doing an extreme close-up of a shark going past, so you can see the teeth. Um, that was fine. Sure. Yeah. It's fine. It's all good. It's fine. I agree with the, the character. Like, um, oh wait, wait, think... one more thing. Oh, one more thing, it. and I maybe Please. we'll get to this later. Uh, how great would it have been if the doctor had picked one of the hand-drawn things that he could look like, <laughs> that and then he had looked like the hand-drawn? Like if he had said, "Okay, right. I want to look it's like a that," cartoon. Look exactly like the uh, poorly illustrated uh, oh, version man. of it. what it was. Wasn't that strange? That is. <laughs> That is a that is a kids in the that's a kids in the hall sketch that I think of all the time. Uh, the one where the the guy is uh, behind a, a screen and he says by, by the sound of your voice and the way it resonates of your head, I can draw your portrait without right. even looking at you. And it becomes an absurd portrait, and you reveal it. The guy actually looks. like I don't an think I've portrait. ever seen that one. Oh, that's I a have. great one. And for all of you listening that don't care, sorry. Um, okay, I agree with you in the. Uh, the amount that the secondary characters had to do wasn't quite as strong. Maybe it was as in the first half. Like Zoe, you know, you got to revisit the fact that she has this perfect recall. So she memorized um, every different head of different uh, groups and where their bases were so they could try to unite mm -hmm. them all together to fight. It's like that was something that like no one else could have done. So that was that was cool that Zoe got to do that. Jamie, you know, there's the big fisticuffs uh, towards the end that uh, that's always right up Jamie's alley. So that that was kind of great. And, you know, he gets to be the 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 leader at the um, uh, resistance HQ for a while. Yep. He was pretty excited about that. Like so they all had good moments. Um, but I, I think most of the, the the what I enjoyed, I think, like you said, was the interplay between the war chief, security chief and the warlord and their dynamic and and uh double crossings that were going to happen and uh, that was that was a lot of fun but uh, i i also kind of agree with the, your your mm, take on Troughton. for me it's not just so much that he's whiny and oh no what are we going to do now it's that it will flip on the on a on a dime yeah that he will uh, like especially so we have to flee we have to i have to get away because the the time lords are coming jamie and zoe it goodbye i'm gonna send you back to your time but doctor will stay with you no 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 it's possible possible you don't understand what's gonna happen but doctor will say the okay right. and then they get <laughs> like, the oh, slow I mean, motion sure. run to oh the... i loved that yeah, that, that was, was actually fun. kind of that was great the, the force field so why don't we is there anything you want to wrap up in the main main body of the story yes what i, I think would... was like the the episode story and then there's the canon part that wraps okay. up Do, yeah before we get into or? the can the canon the doctor the saying goodbye all that stuff yeah i loved every time and this happened in the first five and then it happens again here when you run into the roman world and then the romans yeah. are charging it always makes me think of like no one ever suspects the spanish inquisition <laughs> like all of a sudden it's like and then the and every time you cut to the romans they're charging at you like the way they'd almost feel like they're invading a sketch that they're not supposed <laughs> yes. to be in. Um, yeah. So, like, what it, well, I guess that was it. Is that all I've got for that? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, TARDISes. I guess this is sort of goes into the lore part. Um, but I like that, you know, we have these TARDISes that look like, uh, you know, cabinets that pull out pantries. Right. And then, you, you know, the whole thing with the TARDIS and the chameleon circuit is supposed to look like where it lands. Only the... Doctor's TARDIS seems to obey that because the other ones always look like the pull-out pantries. And then when you go to Gallifrey, there's like a series of TARDISes all parked and they all look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't mean, which is interesting I mean, I guess they're just different models and one model has a chameleon circuit. And one, it's, it's weird because we're just establishing this for the first time now. It's the first time we're ever right. seeing other TARDISes. I'm just surprised they don't follow the same rule that we set up for the for the first TARDIS. Yeah, for the I mean, it is interesting because we definitely know there are different models. They even say it in this story that um, <clears throat> the Doctor's TARDIS is an older model. Uh, it's the war chief kind of lying about it because he's saying, you know, the, the Doctor's like, how did you, how were you able to compress the uh, interior dimensions of the TARDIS and remote control? And these are things you couldn't possibly solve. So technology must be so far advanced. For, and you have an older model. And we have done. Yeah, yeah. And he was lying, but he hadn't actually solved it. But it is an older model. So you would think that it would still have the feature of the chameleon circuit. You know, the, why they're all lined up looking in their default form in on Gallifrey in that row makes sense to me because they're 
they don't need to blend in. They're just you know sitting there waiting to be used. Um, why right. doesn't it, actually take that form whenever it goes from uh, onto the whatever planet it is where they're doing the war games? Again, it's because I guess the soldiers aren't going to remember it. Right, because they, they don't they have that inability to kind of yeah. perceive it. Um, so it so why waste the gas? Why That's waste the saying. gas? Because it That's probably uses a, a lot of energy. They're very green. I also, uh, this is not really the end, although it is the end, but when the this warlord is, the is getting punished, mm-hmm. and I talked about how he throws it back at them, and I like that bit, but it looks like the Time Lords, when they're like, don't make us make you talk, we don't want to hurt you, yeah. they do like that, uh, whatever, magic, and you feel like when the t- when the warlord is supposed to get hit with it, it should be a slow build up, like turning fire on under someone and then they slowly get hot and then oh my god it's too much but like the way the actor does it he just doesn't have any reaction for like a few seconds and then it's instant like this weird delay and then he's immediately (sighs) over acting like it just felt like yeah why don't you just work up to that extreme thing because like it feels like they're like okay here it comes here it comes and he's like (laughs) yeah well, yeah, this, was the, this light came on, and I don't know if that was, like, um, just to signify what the Time Lord was doing to him, or if it was an yeah. actual, like, pain beam or something. I don't right. know. Um, I'll have to read the novelization. I'll never read the novelization. To find another th- that another thing that I, I am just curious about, not knowing all of the details about Doctor Who and all of the novelizations and the and comics why would and we? everything. Does the war chief make a second appearance now i know he sort of gets killed in this but sort of he should regenerate right he is a time lord so it seems like that would be an interesting character like they always go to the master the master the master the master like do we ever see the war chief again i mean we we saw the brain of uh, morbius right he was a time lord Mm -hmm. and you get uh uh what's her face the one we we both like uh what's the the woman's corsair no. Um, oh, right, right. In the in the, uh, the space race thing. Um, the the woman from Dynasty or whatever. Like, uh, come on, man. From the later classic Who's with uh, Colin Baker. Mm-hmm. The Ronnie. Oh, the Ronnie. The Ronnie. Ronnie. Yes. So we have her. Edit, like, edit we... that together nicely so we yeah. don't look like complete assholes. I won't look like an idiot. Uh, okay. What about him? Like, does he... Did right. you look it up? I, I should have probably just looked it up, but it, it feels like he is he should definitely be brought back if he hasn't already. I think that would be a good story thing to introduce him. It, it appears as though he does appear in a, um, a bunch of pros. Um, okay, but not in the actual show. I don't see show. Any, any other appearances in the show or in the audio um, dramas. So Okay, so if the BBC, no, if you were listening, so. uh, we are available to write out that uh, yeah. teleplay. Yeah, we can yeah, put him in the uh, show. But he, I, what, I what did like you to... think of him? Did you like him and his yeah, facial Yeah, I thought hair? it was great. I thought <laughs> I thought he was great. Um, he was definitely the sassiest of the three, which is why I really enjoyed his <laughs> performance. It was super over the top. Um, no, I thought he was great. He was a really good villain. I thought he was probably a good template for the character that becomes the master. Um, yeah. I didn't know at the time. You know, I don't. I try not to look things up before I watch the story because I don't want to be, be forewarned of things. Um, so I was wondering the same thing. They just killed him. Is he going to regenerate? And he actually becomes the master. But then, you know, I was thinking that doesn't make sense because the uh, history of the master and the doctor later, you know, is clear that they've known each other since they were children. So that wouldn't work. They had to retcon a lot of that. So I, I was guessing that wasn't the case. He remind me because I, I, I don't quite recall. When he was killed, he was killed by the, the, the time, warlord. T- the warlord, yeah. Okay, he wasn't killed by by a time lord. No, no. no okay, because no. I was going to yeah, say, and then the he, warlord was killed by right. He was right. He was. They, they uh, say like they vaporized him. Yeah, or yeah, him. yeah. I was going to mention that later. So that seems like a pretty harsh but fair pe- uh, penalty there. Um, uh, <laughs> I like so their I was, penalties. I say, like I like the the fact that they. I guess we're going to jump to the end, but like let's do it. They, 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 it's cruel. Like, they take away all of the memories of Zoe and all of the yeah, memories man. and the shared experiences of, from Jamie. But they're like, but we give them that one time when you right. were there. And then instead of you making the decision to go along with them, we're going to uh, 
rob them of that. It was just kind of... It was really bittersweet. Like, it was yeah. nice to see that they have... To see that these characters go on and they have normal lives after that. But at the same time, to have lost all that experience was, was really sad. Especially, you know, Jamie's was very quick. He's like, you know, shakes his head and, and goes back to, to warring. Um, I, I really did worry, though, for a second. Like, I was like, this is going to get real dark. When Jamie is put back in his own time... I thought he was going to get killed. I thought he was going to get yeah. shot in the back. I was like, Man. that would be so freaking dark. But they didn't do that. He just goes off and... Who knows? He might have actually died after that. But and he, he does not get shot by the guy that we had already seen in this story. Right. I, I had been trying to tie them together. I remember last they're time not, you were like, they're not the same guy. No, no. You, and you, they're you not. could absolutely uh, yeah. write that story if you'd like. But I don't think that's out there yet. Um, but the one with Zoe was the part that was obviously, I think, a lot more uh, painful... That because was great. Of her per- portrayal of it, she's so beautiful. She emotes it so beautifully. Right. She looks but back she, at the end and I like. I feel like I've forgotten yeah. something really important. Oh, but it's not. It's it's not important. It was just really touching and sad um, to see that happen. So, but you know, she gets to go on. I'm sure there are novelizations and TV audio and or, or sorry, not TV audio, uh, audio <laughs> stories that go on to TV audio just and, TV and audio. visual audio. You know, no. we, we come radio. to your house, we turn what do they the, call it? the radio off. Uh, <laughs> But um, yeah, boxes. So, so that was sad. But um, I do we want to talk about the doctor's regeneration? There's other stuff to talk about. We don't. Yeah, like last, um, but. do we have anything else? I mean, we already talked about the you you to back up a little bit to the war yeah. chief. You mentioned yeah. a good like template for what the master becomes, and it is like interesting it. because the master is 71 second season of Pertwee, so he's mm-hmm. only like. A season away. I mean, this is the end of one season, and I don't know how many years are between the two. Is I think Pertwee nineteen seventy? I think it's next season. Okay, so it's literally time. just it just keep, doesn't slow down. It just keeps going. I think so, so yeah, like it's interesting that they didn't decide that the master would have continued to be the war chief. Like you would have just seen the war chief appear with the same actor that's playing instead of him being the master, he could have easily have been the war chief to tie it back to this. Like now I've regenerated him gonna get my revenge on you but no they were like we'll just do a different character and i guess other than the books they don't really ever bring him back yeah just to answer your question um and i, I should have known this because i looked at this afterwards uh pert we was cast during the production of this story but, but they don't show him. after the scene they they recorded the scene where the doctor's on trial and gets those faces to look at <clears throat> that was recorded earlier out of order and they hadn't cast the role yet uh, but okay. by the end, they actually had cast Pertwee. Uh, and could you role. imagine, like, you could probably never get away with doing that now. Like, you see, like, you don't know what's it going to be. He's going around and they're doing that weird, the weird visual effects yeah. that they do on the doctor's face. It. Like, whatever. And then they don't deliver on it. So you I thought like, it was ah, great. Oh, I would love that. Who is it going to be? And then I actually, when I finished <clears throat> War Games, I was like, I got to watch at least the first 10 minutes of Spearhead from Space. Right. Just to like sort of continue it for myself. And like the way they do reveal him is so strange. Like, do you remember it? Yeah. TARDIS just lands and then Pertwee just falls, falls. out. Falls out like, of the TARDIS. Okay, I guess. We don't see him you don't see his being face right put away. into a TARDIS. We don't see anything other than Wait, them you... just saying you're going to be have to be on Earth and you get his face sort of spinning in blackness. Right. Do you see... Do you see Pertwee's face whenever he falls out of the TARDIS? My you did, well, you, you don't sort of do, but they they don't do a close up, and that's okay. that's a reveal later. He later sort of when is he's in the covering himself a little bit, and he falls down face first. Right, right. Um, it, it is interesting too that this punishment that the Time Lords are meeting out to him, um, he is going to forget the whatever they say exactly, but like the mystery of the TARDIS, they forget how to work. The yeah, TARDIS, and that, we should talk a little bit about that but, too, like. But. What so, that means. So they do that, and they, they condemn him to stay on Earth in one period in time uh, for as long as they say is necessary, and they're going to change his face. So I think mm-hmm. what's interesting about this is it's so early in the show, um, and it hasn't built up this entire mythology yet. It's it's building it as it's going. Um, but they don't really... They don't say regeneration. They don't have this concept. I think, obviously, people... you. Because we're watching this out of order, it's very hard for me to remember what things we do know and when we learn them. But right. I don't and think, maybe we do, that, that there's a a finite number of regenerations that any um, Gallifreyan has, 
whether that's actually the case now has been kind of changed in new who's so blah 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 but like generally speaking so they don't talk about that they say they're going to change his face yeah and then no, you, you mentioned the, the that, right you mentioned the number of times that doesn't come until the deadly assassin i think okay, that's when right. they establish that with Tom so, Baker. so a lot of this stuff is, is really interesting they're just saying you know the way that Hartnell changed his face into Pertwee. Pertwee's changing, or sorry, into Troughton. Troughton's changing his face, but it's not necessarily this whole, like, I'm a brand new doctor um, that they really play up, obviously, in the later um, stories. So it's just interesting to see how these things are kind of being built as you go. Right. Um, what other, so there's... there's um... Well, it's also, like, as far as, like, assuming that everybody continues to watch Spearhead from Space, like... They take away his ability to understand the magic, the mystery of the TARDIS. Yeah. But they give him the TARDIS. So, yeah. like, it's not like that he doesn't even have a TARDIS. They, it's like, this is a temporary, it's always a temporary thing. Eventually, you'll figure it out. But as far as him figuring it out, they play him as really not being able to fly it at all anyway. I mean, I feel like right. that's one of the reasons why he has to call the Time Lords in anyway, instead of just putting everyone in the TARDIS and taking them back to their own time. Like, he's got to sort of call the... I guess we should talk about that, too. The fact that he does yeah, that meditation do that. and makes the cube, which was great for anyone that saw that Neil Gaiman story in New yeah. Who, where they sort of yeah. bring that cube back. So that was sort of a so, cool thing yeah, to see. Yeah, so there's the, the hypercubes. I had to look up what they're actually calling them, but it's a tesseract it's a hypercube. That's the way that they can um, transmit their thoughts through time and call for help. And that was really great in that episode that you're referencing. Um, right. But he sort of, do, but they, they joke about it, but he doesn't really know how to go. Like if he said, go to this specific day and I time. Wonder, yeah. I mean, that is, that's been a thing since, you know, Hartnell as well. They've, they've always kind of said that and they did that continuing that through uh, a lot of doctors to different degrees. I always wonder though, because there is this, um, I think particularly in Troughton, there's this character that he's kind of playing. The doctor is kind mm -hmm. of playing a character of, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of bumbling around. I'm lighthearted and fun until I, um, to kind of disarm people until I have to be shrewd and what have you. And I, I do wonder how much of that is uh, put on and how much you really can't Well, if he artist. could do it, couldn't he have just he returned everyone to their time? I think the reason, my reading of why he had to call um, the, the big guys to come in is he couldn't in one TARDIS in a reasonable way stop all the, the fighting that's happening, put an end to all of it, and put everyone back to where they belong all by himself. He would need he needed to have people with greater power than him to, to do this all at once. Right. I think, you know, if he spent all he yeah. You know, I that was my read, that he just needed but at that an point, emergency break to come yep, and, and at fix that it. it was point though, don't they they have the time no, the warlord in custody. Right? And then he's going to yes. leave him for the... So he's almost in control anyway. And you had the war chief saying, all combat, stop. And yeah. then all... So it's, I mean, maybe it is. Maybe you're it's right. Fine. Maybe, it's all. maybe it's, he just it's, couldn't, he couldn't actually steer them all home. It's pulling what, what uh, probably on a thread that shouldn't be pulled on because it's overthinking it. You know? Or it's probably very clear and we just don't... We don't but I just it. really... I mentioned it before, but I love how afraid he is of what's coming. And like yes. the, that level of mystery that as the show goes on becomes less mm -hmm. you know they become less mysterious the more we learn about them and the more everything oh, gosh, is yes. sort of explained and but at this point like they're just i like the way that they're presented and i like how much more powerful they are than the doctor mm -hmm. and then you also learn like why he leaves and like they have like a a watcher uh from marvel comics like type philosophy that they're never interfere with anything they just just sort of learn observe and they don't really go on adventures or do anything and the doctor's like i just want to go out and have fun but he also wants to help I me mean, that was his whole thing with the trial is that they have this great power they're not doing <laughs> right. it to benefit people and he's like you know I, that they they kind of, that's why he got kind of spared and he him. also has access to a highlight reel which was nice because he could Very say nice. hey you want to see all the stuff i did here's a collection of my uh my, my greatest famous hits. baddies uh this is you know it's like a little slide projector where he's going and here's when i was fighting the ice warriors and yeah and that's fine um that was pretty cool i uh, back to the the hypercube thing what i really liked about that was the the animation of it yeah the stop liked, motion thing yeah putting yeah. that down and the way that it all kind of came together i don't know some something about that just made me think of uh other sci-fi shows like uh i don't know tomorrow people or something like that it just had this kind of made me think feel. of gumby 
Yeah, it made me think of Gumby. Oh, well, there's yeah. that too. Um, but I, I loved how he kind of did that, and it was just—it was very mysterious. This is a thing we've never seen him do before. And this a new ability that they explain. And it's just—I I, love that about it, and it's kind of matter of fact, but at the same time, so mysterious and interesting. Um, I think they actually even—I don't think they even mentioned the planet name. No, uh, they, I, they never Gallifrey say Gallifrey. At, at least that I, I was. If they did, I missed it. But I don't I think they, they gave it that. Either. Like, everything is just... Because, again, it's the first time any of this mm-hmm. is being established. But it's like, even when they are talking about it, they don't really tell you anything. And that sort of benefits it more than anything else. Like, I you agree. don't even know how many there are. You see three of them, right? Three Time Lords? The three that, that are in the, the court. Ju- yeah. the, the court people. And then maybe another one. Several others. Well. There's, there's but you two don't have an idea of how many there are. Like, is yep. it uh, thousands and thousands of them? Are they this little small council? Like, so it's very, it's very um, shrouded in uh, a mystery, which is yeah. which is great. Yeah, agree, agree. Um, what other? I think that's that's the main uh, points. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think if I have anything else in my list. Uh, we talked about the drawings. Uh, the end was definitely like uh, a what the hell's going on moment when he is having his face changed. And they go through this whole thing like, let me pick my face. And then you just see those drawings. And he's like, that one's too fat. That one's too young. That like, mm-hmm. And then they change his face and it gets all sort of morphed out. It looks like you're watching like a very early uh, version of like The Ring or some Korean horror movie where his face is melting. And right. you get like that whole thing, and then it's like that. That was a little like, I guess like psychedelic or however you want to put it. Uh, I was not really expecting that to happen, but it did. I like. But that. it did. I thought it was very interesting. Yeah. Um. I, I like the effect. It was that was also another kind of bittersweet thing, as he's kind of, no, 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 no. You're kind of begging for it. Um. He says you're making me feel giddy. Which was just nice, that whole my giddy aunt uh, thing they would say all the time. Um, but it, yeah, it was just, it It was a fine way for him to go. Um, it had made sense in the story. Uh, but it was sad to see. I, I like, I, I do like uh, Troughton a lot. Well, let's um, talk about him because, about. like, this is, well, actually, before, let's not talk about him. Let's talk okay, about, let's so we, let's have talk about ja- we have Jamie, we say goodbye to first, and yeah. we have Zoe. No, we well, Zoe we first, say, then say Jamie. Zoe first, and then Jamie. Yep. Uh, but we say goodbye to both of them. Um, as companions, I really like Jamie. I thought Jamie and the wonderful Trout and work really well together. They have a great chemistry. Mm-hmm. He was he was awesome, and I do like Zoe. Although I feel like she was underused, and maybe it's just because we haven't seen enough Trout and stories with her in it. Because half of them have been taped over with Knots Landing, uh, you know, <laughs> or whatever they were recording. So maybe that's yeah. not fair. But I felt like. I would have liked to see more. I don't know if we're ranking freaking I'm not companions. Ranking anyone, I don't want to do that. But, you but know, I would she say, was fine. Agreed. I, I liked her a lot. I think that when they did use her and let the actress, you know, really do what she was good at, it was a great companion that had a lot of... Um, it's something I say a lot, but I, I love when the companions, especially the women, have a lot of autonomy um, and aren't... Um, like Susan was, a lot of damsel in distress. Um, right. And had, had the Zoe... Really work on her own and she yeah, had that in a lot of instances yes yeah, zoe like all pushes against that line of yeah just becoming the character that just screams or says no doctor look out like that kind of thing and she doesn't quite get there but it feels like that's where she could definitely go and and unfortunately i think that's where some of the companions go later although we get um uh, what's her face next uh east Berlin, which we'll get on the uh, next true. East Berlin. Um, all right. So do you have anything else about the companions? I guess we could just talk nah, about Troughton. Yeah. You were saying that you really liked Troughton, I believe. I, I did. I mean, I, with all the caveats that we've said in uh, a few minutes ago and what we've said over the, you know, all the times we've watched him, um, I still think he's he's pretty terrific. Um, you know, middle, middle of the pack in terms of my overall favorites, not that we're ranking anyone, um, but because it was so early in the um, history of the show, you know, the first actor to take over a role in this way, uh, to continue the same character, make it his own, uh, and advance it, uh, I think he did a fantastic job, made some great choices in the way that he distinguished himself from um, the Hartnell Doctor, 
um, and, it, and it grew over time. I thought he had a lot of uh, multifaceted uh, performances. When you see things like when he, um, oh gosh, what was the name of the story? Where he plays the evil version of himself, the dictator. Yes, that was yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I just I love that he got the ability to kind of as an, as an actor to expand his range, um, but even in the character, really kind of grew, you know, with all of those um, caveats. Like I said, Eric, how, what's your what's your well, send let's off just talk about let's talk about that hair, that haircut yeah. that he's rocking. That is what, uh, the mo. Do you know that he was like forty nine? He's not much older than I am now. Oh my, that's playing a rough this. He 49. seems much older, but much that was older. one of the things I looked up. I was like. How old is he? Like, is that just this bad wig, or what, what's he, what's he got going on up top? And he was born in 1920, and so this is 69. That puts him at 49, 50, maybe. Wow, depending on, depending on the month. But yeah, like he is younger than. Although I guess in 1969 time, 50 is the same as as 80. Uh, yeah, it's not true, but no, you know what I mean. Like he he feel he felt he feels a lot older than he actually was. I thought totally he was. Great. I thought he was better in some episodes or some stories than others. He's not my favorite, and the more I feel like I watch him, the more he sort of moves down my list of mm. doctors. And uh, well, I just don't always... like all of the the whining and the get and the no, 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 like all all the time. Anytime any anything goes wrong or someone's like he's just so frustrated. And yeah. anxious, and and it's fine. It's fine. He's a totally fine fella, and and when he works, it really works. But I'm very happy that we're not going to do any more Patrick Trump. I'm very I'm more the Tom Baker and uh, Pertwee of uh, guy, and uh, yeah, we plenty of that left, don't we? And Hartnell, like I actually really like Hartnell, especially thinking about the Romans and some of those other ones. So I'm actually looking forward to. Returning to Hartnell, uh, happy yeah. to later Hartnells as say well, goodbye to this era, though. Yeah, I, I I am I agree. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing some of the the later Hartnells, even though some of those stories can get a, a bit tedious as they go. But that's that's what we have in store for us. Um, but I think that's it. I think that kind of wraps up everything I had to say about this story. Yeah, I don't know what else we could do. Uh, we talked about the other than talking about that animal stock. <laughs> I don't think footage. we need to stretch it out. What was going on with the animal stock footage? So like the. The Time Lords, they're trying to escape, right? So they, yes. they they seem to have be completely have like these amazing powers where they could just drop force fields around people. Right. They slow time and then they're trying to get to the TARDIS. They get to the TARDIS and they take off and then they're just sort of playing with the Doctor and they put him in the water and they're like, thank God the TARDIS floats. And then all of a sudden it sinks Starts dripping, and there's yeah. just the footage of a school of fish and then the the uh, shark, shark teeth. teeth and then all of a sudden they're in a swamp because you just get like stock footage of an alligator go it's like why not yeah. just make them go right to to the gallifrey because or, that's or what they do s- eventually it's like why or something are they- a little more interesting than being underwater <laughs> and then an alligator like why would- the underwater was cool because they're um they think they're safe and it starts leaking so like the time lord oh that's right it's the TARDIS. It's so that's kind of interesting from the but top. then why would you be worried about an alligator or a crocodile no because whatever <laughs> trying like it's gonna bite through the tardis that's just <laughs> silly why not you know just like, like they're in space they're now they put some right next to the sun and their gravitational bump like something interesting as right opposed to, like an alligator is gonna chip a tooth on the TARDIS. it was weird it's how weird. it was like just animal attack earth-based animal attacks that was what exactly what they were doing like they're not on earth at that point they were the the war planet or whatever is not actually earth but they're they're being attacked by uh earth creatures well but then also not just take them to gallifrey you're gonna do it anyway well but i like that it does establish how powerful they are that they can manipulate manipulate where the tardis is in space and time and also the characteristics by breaking down its um protections like i thought that was actually necessary to show their power but just not in the way they did it and it <laughs> seems just, like that this is the height of their power i mean when we see yeah. the time lords again i don't ever remember them just dropping force fields around groups of people you know because then later you get that kill squad that comes in with their guns right. and the, you know and then all of a sudden they're sort of toying with them you think that they ha- actually have the upper hand and Clearly, yep. they just drop a drop, drop a, a field, uh, drop a field down, and even the doctor, which is nice. They're like, you know, I think it's is it Jamie or Zoe? One of them talks to the Time Lord 
and he's he's like, you know, we're gonna take you back to your time, and they're like, we just want to say goodbye. Say goodbye, yeah. And he's like, all right, come with me. And then they do that right. thing where they right. allow him to 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 go, and then you know the three of them try to escape, but no, it's but there was you're like, not yeah, there. exactly. They weren't worried that they were gonna es- going to escape. Um, like they have all the power. Like not only do they drop force fields around people all over the place, he mentions uh, the whichever head time lord that was that um, when he has the warlord there and all of his minions they're going to dematerialize them he says he also put a force field around their warlike planet to pr- mm-hmm. so that they can't affect so they can put force fields around planets for all of eternity like they are incredibly yeah, powerful they're, they're, um, and, I, and do, I love that mystery that you have there i do like the thinking about trying to put myself in the headspace of someone that was watching this for the first time that mm-hmm. they do give you that scene of the doctor and Jamie and Zoe and we're gonna get away and then they go through that room that looks like yeah. you know obstacle oh that strange course. room yeah that it's like okay that, that was kind of cool room. and so yeah. you're thinking they are gonna get away this is gonna be okay yeah. and then they yeah. pull the rug out from under you and they're like no say goodbye to all three of these characters the show's it, it, gonna exactly, never be the same I thought it was really interesting at that point after they do that floors lava um, obstacle course and then they they get captured the doctors immediately resigned like I don't think he thought they were gonna get away I think he was kind of like. Sure. Let's, right, let's going, do going this. With it. Like he, he knew as soon as they, they got captured. Then this is just he knew he couldn't get away. It's such like an interesting break within the show, sort of the show timeline or however you want to put it. Uh-huh. That not only you go from black and white to color mm-hmm. is like, do we ever have an instance where no one is carried over from one? Usually, it's like a doctor regenerates, but there's still. A companion that thread. That, yeah. that connects to the next one. This is like full. Everything's changing. It's now going to be in color. Brand new doctor. You're not going to know. Although I guess you get the brigadier in the Pertwee one. So that's sort of a a thread that you get from right. the old way to that's the new true. way. That is true. That was that was the and that they did kind of lean on that a bit in the beginning of Spearhead. So um, maybe it's not that exact, but I, that is interesting to think. Like you said, seeing this for the first time when it aired for someone to have gone through the story and now it's something so radically different. Not only do you have the new actor who is very different than the two that preceded mm-hmm. him and it's in color and it's, you know, not this um, traveling through all these different possible worlds. It's just stuck on earth. I, I, yeah, it must've been a lot to kind of adjust to. Why did the time Lords take away the memories of Zoe and Jamie? Like what it would didn't seem necessary. Like, yeah. They give them at least that one, that and it's one. like that's almost cruel in a way. Too. I think so too. Um, but is do they do that because then they could bring Jamie back if they wanted to, and he would sort of know the Doctor enough? Like, don't they bring Jamie back in one of the five Doctors or three Doctors or one of those? Yeah, don't we see him again right. in a color yeah, one, or am I, I making right. that up? I know we no, see that... Susan, right? Doesn't Susan make an appearance in the five Doctors? Isn't she like a much older Susan? Getting my my stuff mixed up, but I'm gonna look that up while we're talking, Dan. Who hey guys, we're not experts, it? as you know. Yeah, no, it's fine. So guys, what, five what doctors, that? we Who get this doctor, Tegan, Turlo, Susan Foreman. Yep, I was there right. And the Brigadier and Sarah Jane are all in that one. So I right. don't know if we do get a Jamie. Jamie. For some reason, I felt like we did see Jamie in a later... Well, I think we see him as, like, a projection hologram that wasn't actually him. Like, there was one, mm. like, bait-and-switchy type thing, but I don't know if we... Nope. Actually two Doctors. Him. Jamie is in the there Two Doctors go. from Good. 1985, right? Oh, okay. With uh, Perry and Colin Baker and Patrick Troughton. And I think we did I, that one. I think we yeah, did we did that one. we did because we're never doing another uh, Colin Baker again. And yeah. I tried to excise all of those from my mind. That's why that didn't pop up. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I think we're, we're probably done. I, we both we're, sort we're, of we're, like this. Maybe you a little bit more than me. Yeah. I just felt like it could have been a five parter. I feel like you could have. I think that's always maybe the case. even a six parter. Like do a six parter. Ten was a little. It was a little much. Yeah. Did we I, have anyone that 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 wrote in? I know we have at least one email. Well, let me look at the uh, the tweets. We got a couple of tweets. I'm sorry, I forgot to uh, uh, solicit feedback earlier than I did this. Yeah, time. it was a hard week for for us. So yeah, this was not top of mind, but um, sorry. Um, but our friend Bernard did mention um, that we should talk about uh, David Troughton's performance. David Troughton. 
Who is David huh? Troughton? So someone it related is Patrick to Patrick Troughton's Trouton? son uh, portrayed the character of Moore. So if you remember back on... I do not remember. No, you shouldn't. There's no reason you would remember his name. Uh, but when we, I think it's in episode six. If it's not six, it's seven. It's very early. Um, we're back in the Civil War zone, mm-hmm. and the uh, German, whatever you want to call it, I forget what the character's name is, but like the the guy that's commanding that zone uh, with the monocle. Yes, um, yes. He's he's been tied up, and he tries to do his mind control on him. That Moore is one of the resistance fighters. Um, that he tries to mind control. He's a blonde guy, and he says, "This won't work on me." And he finally gets him to actually like mind control him, and he thinks that he's uh, that that he's a subordinate to him, and he's going to fight. But then uh, he kind of gets snapped out of it. Anyway, he had a good, he had a pretty good scene. Um, but he's nice got dialogue. Then does he talk? He had dialogue. Oh, he had nice. dialogue. He good pulled on a gun you, young, on the guy. Young Patrick Troughton. Uh, yeah, I think he actually shot. He's the one that shot the the monocle, um, be monocled man. Um, but Bernard also goes on to say, um, did you know the hypno eye specs reappear in the McCoy era in cutscenes from Silver Nemesis Part 1? I shit you not. So you remember um, there was the scene with McCoy in uh, Silver Nemesis where he's in uh, Windsor Castle and he's like trying to convince a guard to do something. He pulls out these glasses to try to hypnotize someone. And that's a nice callback mm. to this technology in a way. Um, I don't remember, like I said to on Twitter, I don't remember if that was a cut scene that we saw on YouTube or if that actually was in the BritBox version that we walk, watched, but I do recall seeing that, which was kind of fun. These these Very interesting cool. little callbacks. And like I said, for us, it's so strange to see these completely out of order. Yeah. Yet it's hard to know how these things match up, so it's hard in one way to remember what things do we know at this point in time, but in other ways it's nice because these moments kind of collide against each other in ways that you wouldn't have gotten in order um our friend paul says i hope you enjoyed the rest of this war game six years in this is where doctor who lore as we know it really begins it might be interesting to compare this big 1966 revision for the doctor with the timeless children upset and remember this wasn't universally welcomed then i don't want to get into the timeless children thing what is the the timeless children oh okay so we can't talk about it because you haven't seen it it's the Oh, culmination that's, that's the of new, the newer Jody Whitaker. I have stuff to watch that. It's, is she it's officially a lot. It, that, not to change subjects? We keep on the same subject. I'm actually not changing subjects. But is she? Is, did she leave the show? I don't know that it's been announced, and I don't. Okay. Think so. Okay. I don't know that it's been announced. But I'm, I thought I, I saw something in uh, whatever. But um, go, but the, 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 the timeless children thing. I will be very interested when you do get around to watching it. Maybe when it's on HBO Max or whatever. Um, it's a substantial addition, change, modification of uh, of lore in mm. maybe in a similar way as as Paul is saying here that this was a big deal and wasn't liked at the time. I think the timeless children stuff is pretty divisive. I don't like it. I personally think it 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 messes with things in a way that I don't find interesting or useful, mm. um, and kind of in some ways damages the mythology, but. Yeah, maybe maybe five years from now I'll think, oh, that was a really good idea, and they did a lot with it. But it's interesting. Uh, so everyone, look forward to that when Brian, uh, when Eric finally sees it. Our friend Brian on Twitter says, interesting to watch this, remembering that the very next story is Spearhead, which feels like a very different show. Yes, agree with Eric's comment that this makes uh, WG feel a bit old hat. But also feels like a milestone for what it adds to the lore. Oh, it makes WG War Games. Mm-hmm. I agree with Eric's comment that it makes War Games feel a bit old hat, but it also feels like a milestone for what it adds to the lore. Great end to the '60s black and white era. I agree with that too. I yeah. love. I mean, especially as it starts getting, like you said, it's gonna get psychedelic towards the end. But psychedelic and black and white is a very different thing to like the later stuff we um, end up seeing to some extent. I don't think yeah, it would Doctor be Who really, really gets that crazy. It would be of. really interesting to see how this episode, I keep saying episode, how this story would have mm-hmm. played in color. Yeah. Cuz there's a lot of like we talked about how the set design is kind of great. I think it and benefits like a lot the black of like really cool things and even like it feels very 50s even though it's it's 69 of like that you know the the weird the slick Devo like glasses and all like, yeah. but how would this have looked if it was in color? Would that is the black and white doing it favors by sort of 
hiding some of the things that would have looked even sillier if it was in black and white. That's I mean, my sorry, guess, if it was honestly. in color. And, like, yeah. how would the set design and everything have held up? Uh, maybe. It would be interesting to see, like, a color. Although I hate when they colorize things. I would like to see, like... You know, I think they did... Um, didn't they colorize some stuff from Mind Robber? And you can see, like, sort of pictures of that. I'd be right, interested yeah. to see, like, ha how this would, would look. Yeah, some very talented people go back and do some colorizations, um, of, if not video, of stills, and that would be interesting. But I'm glad they didn't shoot it in color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, no, I it think I think it so works much from the black and white. It works a lot better, uh, yeah, in black and white for all those reasons. Uh, Brian does go on to say, "I love that Troughton's regeneration is perfect for his doctor, silly and unsettling at the same time." Yes, yeah, yes, it is. It, it again, like the tone. Yeah. Uh, it's like, is this goofy? Like my daughter walked by while I was watching it. She just sort of shook her head, uh, disgusted at her dad watch. She's like, what is this? Yep. And it like, when you look at it, it's like, oh, this is absolutely ridiculous. This is, yeah. but then it's also horrifying. Like the, then it moves into this thing where it's actually frightening. So yeah. it definitely bounces between those two extremes. I thought it did it effectively. I, I, I definitely enjoyed that. Um, and lastly, uh, Paul again uh, replied, uh, though he, regarding the Timeless Children, though I personally don't like the Timeless Children revision, some original fans didn't like the introduction of the Time Lords in 66. Similarly, similarly, the Deadly Assassin got hate about 10 years later for apparently revising the Time Lords again, though I think it works fine. I love the um, Deadly I, Assassin. I, the, I do as well. I like the, the canon that it establishes there as well. Um, it does get a little more like technocratic and seeing all that sort of thing is, yes. is a different feel than this, where like you had said, that feels like a large mystery of that we just don't know the shape of it. This is all things that are new and being um, invented and we, we purposely don't know a lot. And then later so much is revealed maybe to its detriment. Um, but I liked it back then too. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Eric, yeah, we, we got, got emails. We got it. Uh, I know one email I've got here. This is coming us it. from uh, Christopher Calloway. Uh, this is some his thoughts on episodes 6 through 10. Better pacing, less being caught, escaping, getting caught again. Completely agree with that. Uh, it felt that you were the way you were watching one episode per day. Uh, the war te he makes actually a lot of the same comments we've already made. The uh, war chief is like a prototype master. Uh, uh, he was deliciously cold and ruthless. He would have made a great master. Yeah, yeah, I, I would, I totally. would agree with everything you just said there. Maybe he regenerated off screen after his dem demise into uh, Roger Delgado's ga master. I like to Does imagine. Does not so. seem to be the case, but I like it. Right. Just because there, there's so much. They, like I said, they established the history of the master and the doctor having grown up together you would think that they would have to retcon a lot of that to make that work but whatever okay yeah he goes on to say that uh when he's uh, the doctor showing off the time lords all the evil he fought he could have left out the quarks uh yeah, they didn't help his case i mean the quarks mm. one of the lamest funny. robots uh of the series uh nice of the time lords and the writers for letting zoe and jamie remember their first adventure with the doctor before being set back to their proper time and place one would expect the old trope of a complete memory wipe of their adventures, but no, well done. And I agree with that as well. Although you kind of did say, and I agree, that it's almost a little cruel. It, it is, it is kind of, it, it, it is of kind it. of cruel, but Weird. at least they have, well, they'll always have that moment. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. But also, they probably didn't need to do any of it because what difference does it make? I mean, I guess because, I mean, they're going to put the doctor on Earth anyway. He right. doesn't forget that he's a Time Lord. He only forgets the mysteries. And that's an interesting thing to jump back to. So they have to give him a new face because the doctor says, but people on Earth will know me. Right. Well, they know my face. And they go, yeah, we'll have to give you a new face. Why? He goes de down there and he meets the brigadier and he's like, it's me with a different face. Yeah. Like, what? Well, he's, uh, like, sure. he's not hiding his identity. He's not pretending he's not the doctor yeah. they're yeah, like it, it your contract like... is up you have to get a new face because you're aging out and we need to yeah. get a different audience yeah we need, we need to replace this young old looking actor with an older <laughs> younger looking actor um <laughs> but uh, uh you're not going to be let's... able to do a judo chop it just we don't <laughs> we need someone that you're do never going to pull off that cape thing. that we really want right. uh half cape that we want to get um 
Yeah, no, that's true. It felt like to me when the doctor said, you know, but they know me down there, um, that, that he was just trying to come up with any excuse for them not to do this to him. And they're like, all right, we'll just get right. a new face. Yeah. We got that. We got that covered. No big deal. I think that's a fair reading. One more. He has one, one last sentence just saying, overall, oh. solid episode, albeit yeah. very long. Agree on that as well. Satisfying final episode for the second doctor and his companions. And yes, and we talked about it, but I really like that. As long as this was, they gave you time to, to 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 see this is what Jamie's doing, and the doctor's smiling as Jamie's running after the guy, and here's what Zoe's doing, and it's, right. it's bittersweet with her looking off. But at least it's like they gave them their moments, like they didn't mm-hmm. have to. And some of the later companions just leave, or Sarah Jane is just Sarah like Jane. abandoned no. on a street. Um, but just, yeah, so that that right. was nice that they did that. I agree. Uh, we have another email here. I don't think we read this last time because it looks like it came in much later than when we recorded. But if it's mm-hmm. repeat, oh well. Uh, Christoph's Paddock says about the war games, uh, one of my all-time favorite stories. Yes, there's a lot of capture, escape, capture, escape, run around, but it doesn't go on too long. Instead, I find that despite a limited number of sets, they create a sense of truly large world here. I think I mentioned that in the last um uh, episode of ours as well uh, because of this it doesn't drag over 10 episodes it always feels fresh with shifting locations and new characters and then of course there's the introduction of Gallifrey at the end which opens the door to all sorts of world building in the decades to come I love this agree 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 that's all we want is people to agree with us yep. um, totally think that's that is fair as well um, I think that's it is that um, it let's see is that it Dan Nobody oh, expects uh, someone Romans. comment. Someone did comment on uh, on the show page for War Games Part One. Uh, William said, and this is in response to something Eric said on the show. Um, the reason for the price is so you can you can click on oh yeah that was the, show page. the DVD being three hundred dollars or whatever. Yeah, you can click on the link on the show page. It'll take you over to Amazon or wherever and you can buy the DVD, and we get a apparently get some money out of it. It hasn't happened yet, but we'll find out. But this one was extremely expensive. The reason for that price is because that story, I believe, is no longer getting pressed to DVD. So there's probably a short amount of DVDs left uh, available of that story. And also, just all the cost of vendors to ship those DVDs here probably factors into the resulting price. I got one, and I remember it was shipped from the UK. Um, yeah, so that's interesting that they just don't, uh, they don't make them like they used to anymore, Eric. Nope. So, but feel free if you folks want to buy it from there, you can go to, uh, go to our show, uh, website, the old doctor who show.com. There you can see all of the previous stories that we reviewed and also check out the schedule to see which ones we're going to be doing next, which, uh, happens to be the sea devils. Um, so that's going to be fun to see. Uh, yeah, we're going back to the story. Um, so we got that coming up. Um, also on all the show pages, you can see all of the gifts that I so lovingly handcraft pixel by pixel. Um, I only put a few of those on the Twitters and on the Instagrams, but they're all there um, on the show page. Feel free to use them however you see fit. Uh, but you can also reach us on uh, a Gmail, the old Doctor Who Show at gmail.com. Feel free to send us an email. We'll read it on the show just like we did previously. And you can tweet at us at TODW Show. On Twitters, you can do whatever you do on an Instagram at TODW Show there as well. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's I got right, Dan. I did it. Yeah. All right. I think that's it. Oh, if you are a comic book reader and you oh, are heading it? into the comic book store, uh, the new graphic novel that I've written in uh, art by Will Perkins is available in previews. So if you're ordering from your local shop, which is a great way to get yourself some comics uh the code is the preview code is jan for january jan 210326 uh the uh, comics What's... are so antiquated with the way that you have to you have to pre-order a book like months in advance and if you don't pre-order the book chances are they're not going to order it so it does mean a lot what's if you the name of the book goblin there it goblin is. but if you're like a regular book reader you should be able to get it at a regular bookstore and that includes amazon and walmart.com and target.com and like all of those things that would have books you can order it there no problem uh, but if you want to get it through a comic book shop like your local comic book shop that you use diamond and the preview code again, J-A-N-2-1-0-3-2-6. 
very easy yeah. to remember. It's pretty yeah, it's obvious. Totally just rolls off the tongue. There. It's so dumb that we. It's 2021, and this is still how you have to order comics. Uh, is with these antiquated system, but whatever. It is what it is, and so. Easiest Please way to remember, guys, is just to tattoo it to your forearm and show that yeah. to your... Uh, or go to my clerk. Twitter page, uh, E. Grissom, my Twitter account, and I have it as my pinned tweet. Ooh. So there's a link on there, and you would just click it, and it goes right to the previews page, and you can read about the book, and you can see that it's in shops on May 26, 2021, and it's $14.99. It's only $15. That's not a lot of money. No, uh, and totally honestly, worthwhile. if you go on, on Walmart or Amazon or whatever, they almost definitely cut the list price down. So it's probably, could probably, probably be yours for about 10 bucks is my guess is what the sale price will end up being. So there it's you go. It's a deal at twice the price, folks. That's right, Dan. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Um, I think that's it. I got to get out yeah, of here. We got to get out. Uh, I'm, we're all I gotta, tired. Got to get back to the revolution. Yep. All right. Peace. <laughs> stay, stay hungry and uh, good and make the world better <laughs> stay hungry and good <laughs> I meant stay hungry like Twisted Sister stay hungry not that you should not eat I, uh, I mean stay hungry eat. like the wolf um, oh that's how I mean yeah. yeah I just watched a Duran Duran documentary on Showtime I'm sorry for that. Okay. Uh, okay so that's it so we are right. done thanks bye bye, bye. Masses. Evil minds that plot destruction Sorcerer of death's construction In the fields of bodies burning As the war machine keeps turning Death and hatred to mankind Poisoning their brainwashed minds Oh, Lord, yeah.